Hey everybody, welcome to Mission Fitness. We are streaming live for the first time. No pressure there, huh? <laughs> we are continuing our series on survivors. And today, boy, do we have a great story today. Our guest today has survived not one, but two medical scares. And we are really glad that he's here to tell us his story and to give us, give us his insight on, on his experiences. Mike Montero, thank you for joining us, man. Hey, Leon, thanks, great to be here. Thank you. Oh, and uh, first of all, happy birthday. Thank you. Yeah. A little belated. So 62 yeah, in two days. And two, oh, it was two days. It was two <laughs> yeah. days ago. Okay, I thought it was a day ago. All right. Celebration was at Galatoire's yesterday, but it was great. So, uh, but an even bigger celebration is that you survived not one, mm. but two scares. I mean, okay, so the first one started almost as an, as an earache or something, right? Yeah, they, they diagnosed me with uh, uh, a little in-ear issue, um, Meniere's disease. Mm -hmm. And what that does is fill up the inner ear canal with fluid. And I, I was just having a hearing issue and went and got it checked out. They put me on steroids uh, for nine days. And uh, within four or five days, I, I thought I was having a reaction to the steroids. Well, come to find out, um, I was having a heart attack. And um, one Saturday, I was just um, working uh, in, in the back pool house and started having real bad pains way over here in my chest. Didn't know what it was. Lasted for about an hour and a half. Went away. Had dinner the next day with my daughter. It was her birthday. Dinner. Well, that, that, it was a Sunday. Um, then um, we're, we're on our way. I'm on my way to the Bahamas to do a grand opening out of Margaritaville because we did an mm -hmm. install there. Audio system install. I get to the Atlanta airport. Um, walk from the New Orleans gate to the Bahamas gate and the pain starts happening again. And again, I'm not thinking heart attack. I doesn't run in the family. I've never had a heart issue. And this is a chest pain or? Chest pain, same thing over mm -hmm. here. And it's pretty, it's pretty bad again. So I, I, I you know, just kind of trying to get through it and get on the plane and it gets a little worse while I'm on a plane. I feel a little pain in my jaw and I'm thinking, oh, this isn't good. So I called my wife and said, you know, uh, when I get back, <laughs> From Bahamas, I really need to go see a doctor because something, something's not right. Mm -hmm. So luckily, I, I, I was uh, I made it back from the Bahamas in one piece. Came back, no other issues. Went to the doctor that Friday. Uh, when I got back, three days later, um, three to four days later, he put, gave me gave me an EKG. Looked at the EKG and said, "You've had and you're having a heart attack. You need you, to go to the ER now." So at that moment, you were. He said I was having a heart attack. Okay. I had no um, issues at the time. I wasn't in any pain. I wasn't in short of breath. Nothing. Okay, so you went to the emergency room. Drove myself point. to the ER. He said, when you get there, hand the nurse this paper, hand it a paper. She looked at it and says, come with me. Get undressed. <laughs> so <laughs> put me on the table right away. Chew these aspirin. Chewed four or five aspirin. Um, I said, and how you feel? I said, I'm, I'm feeling good. I'm, I don't have any issues. Well, they took, you know, the chest basic protocol x-rays and blood work, sure enough. The blood work came back with the enzyme saying I'm, I'm having a heart attack. Mm -hmm. Next thing is the uh, going in for an angiogram. So they put me on the table um, in, in, the, uh, in the room and I was uh, on, we, being wheeled into the room and just so happened that I, I, I was doing or that I had done a lot of these um, sessions at Ochsner in, uh -huh. in their um, a cardiology lab with stenting and angioplasty and everything. So I, I kind of knew a little bit about what was going on and I was teasing the nurses and I was just having a good old time. I was feeling mm -hmm. great. Sure enough, they put me on the table and uh, Dr. Dugan was, uh, he's the head cardiologist at EJ and um, I'm looking at the screen and he hits the die and he says, oh, there it is. And I knew what it was because I and was- And you could see it. I could there. see it because mm -hmm. uh, you're awake in this procedure. Mm -hmm. And my LAD artery, the Widowmaker, was blocked 99%. Now what, and 99, so something was getting through, but hardly anything, a drop there. Yeah, hardly anything. And, and so you, and were, you were probably not uh, an hour at most away from... Uh, from well, the, 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 from doctor, the doctor's bedside manner after the procedure went out to see my wife, and he told my wife and, and one of my friends, Chris Brown, that was there kind of waiting to see what was going on, the doctor told them both. He was hanging on by a thread. Literally. Okay, I, 
but I felt fine, uh -huh. I, you know, no issues. So the, the, the procedure's done, um, I'm, I'm still feeling great. Um, you know, they, they numb up your leg, go, they go up your, uh, your groin, groin yeah. you know, mm -hmm. th with the tubes and stuff. And so I have to stay in the hospital kind of overnight. Um, so I'm, I'm in the hospital and I start noticing that, uh, go to the bathroom and I'm bleeding from the rectum. Hmm. And they said, uh, it's Watch your microphone. Your okay. Mic. Sorry. Um, bleeding from the rectum. And, I, and the nurse, hmm. I tell the nurse, I tell doctors, and they, they um, so it's probably nothing, just, you know, probably hemorrhoids or something. So I, I get out of the hospital. It continues to bleed. It gets worse. Um, I, I go see um, uh, a, a doctor about that. Um, I have a colonoscopy. Nine days later, they find stage three colon rectal cancer. So, so you had cancer at the time that you were having the correct the heart problems. You just didn't know it. Didn't. All right. I had no. I had no issue. I had no. Um, um, you had no symptoms. No symptoms right. of that at all. Mm -hmm. um, so, so then. So the heart problem was taken care of, right? You had yeah. the you had the procedure to open up the yes, and it, so. the, and the reason I started bleeding as bad as I did is because they put you on heavy duty blood thinners during mm -hmm. these procedures, so you don't clot, and they keep you on blood thinners right. for a long time after. Um, so I was on blood thinners, and they they found the the colon rectal cancer. Luckily, I was able to get in touch with MD Anderson, went through the uh, treatment at MD Anderson. Um, Chemo radiation mm -hmm. for, for 28 treatments um, in Houston. Then uh, you, the, the usual um, protocol for this type of cancer is uh, once the treatments are done, then they want to do a resection. They want to mm -hmm. take out the part of the colon that has the cancer in it. But I did have a complete response to the treatment. Complete. Uh, complete meaning response, it, meaning the tumor went away completely. The um, the, uh, the uh, I forget what they call it. Anyway, it, there, there was some, something else involved. The, um, it's a... Okay, so uh, that's okay, that's okay. So, so you, you didn't need the surgery, right? Well, they still want to do the surgery, but okay. they, they couldn't do the surgery because I had to stay on the blood thinner. Mm -hmm. So the, where the cancer was, it was a 15 millimeter tumor. Um, which is and the reason it was stage three is because it in, it involved one of the lymph nodes. That's uh -huh. what I was trying to think. Ah, uh, okay, okay. So all that the lymph node swelling went down. Um, the, the the tumor basically disappeared. Mm -hmm. um, the doctors told me that the chances of coming back in the same place is like fourteen percent, according to all the studies that have been done over the years. Yeah. So I. I couldn't have the surgery, so I did not have the surgery. Mm -hmm. uh, second bout of chemo came, um, uh, it ended in, in September of that year, which, was, which would have been 16. Mm -hmm. Go back a little bit. This happened in December of 15. Then the cancer was treated through uh, uh, 2016. Mm -hmm. And uh, my last chemo was... Uh, ended as in September of 16. Luckily, no real issues. I, I went through the treatments really well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was going to say, did you have any side effects? Maybe? Not, not really. Just a, a little bit from the second bout of chemo. Mm -hmm. um, a little bit of neuropathy in my feet still, but nothing major mm -hmm. that, I, that, that I can't deal with. Um, I had a, a, a great partner, my wife. I call her Nurse Ratchet. <laughs> she really took care of me. Um, Made me walk every day, uh, exercise, drink plenty of water, my lemon juice, fed yeah, me well. You know, it that's a great. big thing. I guess, you know, when you have that kind of treatment, the, the worst thing you can do is just lie in the bed all day, Ooh, right? Yeah. Definitely not. We, we took walks and uh, plenty of walks, miles a day. You know, mm -hmm. we, I stayed active and uh, it, was, it, it, was a, it was a run, I can tell you. And uh, luckily, so far, so good. I had a colonoscopy about... A month ago, mm -hmm. my third one since the cancer, the polyps kind of still popping up, but no malignancies, everything's great. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so I'm on a three year protocol now for. Uh, for yeah, for that was my next question. Okay, so three years. It so was every year. 
Now it's three. Years. And your blood work, everything has been has been great. Everything's fine. And the the ticker, how's that? So far, so good. I, uh, every six months, I see the cardiologist. Mm -hmm. so. Do you do a stress test uh, or? No, it's an e it? it's an EKG mm -hmm. and um, uh, blood work, mm -hmm. and you know the the typical things they check. Uh, you know when you're there, at stethoscope and right. blood pressure. And, right. Uh, but yeah, he said the, the heart's doing great. So okay. still on medication, still on blood thinners. Um, and that's that that'll be for the rest of your life. Or at least in the I'll foreseeable be, I'll future. I'll be on the beta blocker and an aspirin for the rest of my life. I mean, mm -hmm. blood thinners now every every other day. Yeah, but hey, if it gives you 20, 25, 30 more years, mm. then given that you could have died on the table, right? You know, the, the, I, I think the hard thing, um, I guess, from a worry standpoint, it, they're both war, to me they're they're worrisome. Mm -hmm. But I, I I think the cancer is is the worst of it. Yeah, you know, because you don't. I don't want it to come back, and neither does anybody right. else that's ever dealt with that. Right. And, and you just, and you never know. Once it's, once it's inside of you, right, right. You just don't it just know. needs, it just needs to trigger. Yeah. But fourteen percent are, are good odds. Well, in uh, that spot, you know, right, right, in, in that spot. Mm -hmm. But again, it, once it's in your body, it could pop up anywhere. Yeah, you know, you yeah. Just, so you just have to stay on top of it. I mean, yeah. which is, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so okay. I'm on an every, it was every six months till this last uh, January. Mm -hmm. Now it's every year. I do the uh, cancer, um, the screening, checkup, the, yeah. and screenings, mm -hmm. and stuff. Uh, MRIs every three years with with CAT mm -hmm. scans. So, so not what CAT scans, CT scans? So, what are you, what is your advice to people in general? I know I have a, I have several friends who are over the age of fifty, really over the age of forty five, and they don't want to get colonoscopies. They don't even want to go to the to their primary care mm -hmm. physician. I mean, what do you tell people now that you've what experienced this? What camera am I this, looking at? You know, that one. <laughs> Look, today's world, guys and girls, cancer did not run in my family at all. But I'm here to tell you, if you're, if you're hitting 40, 45, you need to go get a colonoscopy. In today's world, the way food is out there, that there's so much stuff in it these days, and the water you drink, you just yeah. never know. So go get checked. And, you know, and people talk about how bad the prep is. Matter of fact, I have my first one coming up in probably a month. You know, and uh, everyone says, oh, the, the prep is bad, the prep is bad. But it's really, it's a, it's a day out of your life. You know, given what, if, given what you've been through, the prep is trivial. Let, let me tell you about prep. Um, if, that, if that's something that concerns you, consider it a, a, a bad day at home and mm -hmm. you, you're going to be on a toilet for a while, but that's it. <laughs> it's, it's not a big deal. Right, you know? right. To, Especially if it can save your life. Yeah, the end definitely justifies the means in, in this case. I mean, it's one day of inconvenience that could actually save you a lot, of, a lot of pain, a lot of suffering for everybody, right? In, I guess in retrospect, looking back, the heart attack saved my life. Mm -hmm. So I would have never known. Right. You know, I, I, well, I would have known, and it probably would have been too late. Yeah. Once, it, once stage four, it's colorectal mm -hmm. cancer is pretty deadly. Right. You know, and I, I was concerned. Stage three is not... A good thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, I mean, that's one of the reasons that those are called the the silent killers because you just, you know. Well, two silent killers. Yeah, you have the two. L, the you LAD the, artery, which they call mm -hmm. the widow maker, for a reason, right? You just don't know, and then you're gone. Mm -hmm. It explodes, and see you later. And then colorectal cancer, you don't know. Yeah. You know. Well, go okay. get checked. <laughs> so moving forward, I mean, like today, do you do you exercise on a regular basis? Do you walk? Do you I jog? Active. Do you bike? What do you I do? Stay active. Um, I don't exercise on a regular basis, no, but I, I do stay active. Mm -hmm. um, I try to eat as well as I can, but we live in New Orleans and that's really hard to do. <laughs> you know, we were talking about that earlier, how it is, but I mean, you know, you find the moderation. You know, you enjoy yeah. life, but at the same time, especially, you know, when you, you've had heart issues and blockages, mm -hmm. I mean, it, it just kind of probably makes you a little less likely to grab the second half of the shrimp pole boy. Yeah, well, you know, you know it's still tough. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's still tough. Um, but, you know, plenty of liquids, water, water, mm -hmm. water. I do lemon juice every day with, with lemon zests. Uh, that is a huge okay, what, energy what, booster for that's, me. Okay, so that's what that does for you. You um, mentioned that earlier. When, when I can um, find um, uh, organic lemons, mm -hmm. that's the ones that I like to use. If yeah. not, the, the store-bought, still good. Yeah. Lemon juice, uh, lemon juice at, as a... Um, preventative, in my opinion, 
w it really helps. It mm -hmm. goes in ascetic, aesthetic, and it, it uh, turns into an uh, alkaline in your body and keeps your alkaline, your pH level kind of stable and normal mm -hmm. and helps prevent cancer cells from growing or, or even being in your body. Yeah, and look, Plus the energy that it gives you in the morning, it's just amazing. If you can get energy and a little extra that it, it could possibly prevent or stop or even slow down cancer cells, yeah, get the well, lemon juice. I've, I've been on it since I knew I had the cancer and I'm telling mm -hmm. you, I think it made a huge difference. Well, you're doing something right because you huge look great. Thing. Thank you. You know, and I'm blessed. Right. Um, and Nurse Ratchet's still there for me. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we all need a Nurse Ratchet. I think we get it. We all need a Nurse Ratchet. My wife Susan, she's she's a blessing. Well, that that was really really great. You had a terrific support system too. Mm -hmm. So I mean that that helps mentally, right? Yep. You know the oncology team at MD Anderson, uh, the oncology team here in in, uh, in on the North Shore. Mm -hmm. um, Dr. Jack Sox, he's my local. Oncologist, great guy. Um, took real good care of me. MD Anderson really took good care of me, and and again, I am blessed. Well, thank you so much for coming and sharing your story with us. We really appreciate it. Yeah, man. Go get your colonoscopy. Yep, definitely get that colonoscopy. Everybody's saying 40, 45. Absolutely. Get it done. Get your check from the primary care physician. Get your colonoscopy if you're over uh, if you're over 50. Definitely do it. It's important. Here's living proof of yep. why. So uh, that will wrap it up for this live streamed edition of Mission Fitness. Don't forget to follow us on Facebook and Instagram and subscribe to our YouTube channel. We'll see you next time. Thanks for joining us. Thank you, Leon.